Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review this Deco XC75 Pro. This is TP-Link's third lineup of mesh Wi-Fi 6E systems. I've already reviewed the previous two. Links down below if you guys are interested and I'll put product links for this as well in the description box below. So this comes with a speed reading of AXC5400, but new to TP-Link's Wi-Fi 6E system, they're actually supporting speeds faster than gigabit now. So this one can go up to 2.5 gigabits, assuming you need that speed, assuming your internet is fast enough for that. And it covers up to 7,200 square feet, assuming you're using all three units, connects up to 200 devices. To summarize the back, Wi-Fi 6C is going to operate much faster and be a lot less congested because it's operating on the new six gigahertz band. Now, even if you don't have any Wi-Fi 6C devices, you can use the six gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul channel to improve the speeds of your secondary nodes if you have them hooked up wirelessly in wireless backhaul, I should say. Now, mesh Wi-Fi is designed to replace your existing router to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. So if there's parts of your home that aren't getting enough Wi-Fi coverage, then getting a mesh Wi-Fi is most likely going to help with that situation. And the cool thing about a mesh Wi-Fi is you still connect to one Wi-Fi name, one SSID. So if you have your Wi-Fi device and you hook up to your SSID, it connects you to this one if you're closer to this one. If you walk to this room, it's gonna connect you to this one. If you're closer to this one, it's gonna connect you here to always give you the best possible Wi-Fi signal. Now, that's why it's called a Wi-Fi dead zone killer. Now, TP-Link also offers Home Shield, which gives you network protection, parental controls, quality of service, and comprehensive reports. They also offer Home Shield Pro, which does require a subscription, which adds features on top of these. Now unboxing this thing, we get three units. They're all going to be the same. And we have three ethernet ports. Two of them are gigabit. One of them is 2.5 gigabit. And we have our power. Now typically these are auto sensing. Now you also have a factory reset on the bottom. Again, these are exactly the same. These are all technically routers. If they were hooked up individually. Here we have the power plug. It is 100 to 240 volts. There should be two more of these. And there's most likely going to be an ethernet cable which with some instructions. Granted, these things are very, very easy to set up. You just get the Deco app on the App Store or the Play Store and you're good to go. But yeah, there's an installation guide. And it doesn't say if this is Cat5e, Cat6, Cat7. So I'm assuming it's at least Cat5e to support gigabit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's been a few days since I've unboxed these using it as my main mesh system and so far so good. So no drops, super easy to set up using the Deco app and I had a chance to do all my speed tests, range tests, everything else. I have all those numbers here. Let's jump straight in with the internet speed test. Now, no matter how fast your mesh system is, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speed. So in my case, that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. When I have my computer hooked up to this thing via ethernet, I get those speeds, no problem. However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. I use my iPhone 13 Pro Max as my Wi-Fi 6 device and a combination of my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and Google Pixel 6 Pro for my Wi-Fi 6E devices. Now, both of these give pretty similar results, so I just wrote down the Samsung numbers in this case. Looking at the results, we could see that there's a drop both in download and upload speeds, especially in the upload speed section. However, this is very typical for most of the mesh systems that I test, and we could see that the Wi-Fi 6E is doing better than the Wi-Fi 6. Now, to find out the true performance of this mesh system, I use a local area speed test server, which means I remove the public speed test server and my ISP from the equation by making my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer, isolating the router. And as you guys can see from the results, there's a drastic improvement both for Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. Because this thing has a 2.5 gigabit port, on the single router configuration, we could see that Wi-Fi 6E is just going crazy fast. Jumping to wired backhaul, this is when you have your secondary nodes hooked up via ethernet to your primary node and you can have an unmatched switch in between them if you want. So this is going to typically give you the best possible performance in most mesh system setups. And as you guys can see from the results, they are very, very good, especially for Wi-Fi 6 
you could see that there's not much of a drop between this and the single router configuration. However, the Wi-Fi 6E has dropped quite a bit to around gigabit speeds. The reason for the slowdown is because this mesh system only has one 2.5 gigabit port. So even if you're going from the secondary's 2.5 gigabit to the primary's gigabit, it's going to operate at the slower of the two speeds, hence why you see it drop to just about gigabit speeds, which is still very, very fast. Now, moving on to wireless backhaul. This is exactly the same thing as wired backhaul, except you remove the Ethernet cable in between them. So essentially, you have your primary one hooked up to your modem, or the server in this case, and you have your secondary ones talking to this main one wirelessly. And just like with wired backhaul, I did my speed test off the secondary node. So phone, secondary, jumps to primary, goes to server. And as you guys can see, wireless backhaul performance is very, very good for this mesh system. And that's really thanks to its six gigahertz dedicated backhaul. Now, something to note, when you use the 6 GHz as a dedicated backhaul, you cannot connect to the 6 GHz band. However, even connecting to normal Wi-Fi 6 on the 5 GHz band, you're still getting crazy fast speeds. Now, I also tried turning off the 6 GHz as a dedicated backhaul, and it was still very fast, but not quite as fast as this. Jumping into range tests. So range will vary based on location. If you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other walls and a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff is going to hurt your range. I'm typically more of an open area than I used to be, so now I get more range. So. Looking at the results, 20 feet away, very good speeds. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside with some walls and still getting pretty good speeds. At 100 feet away, I'm across the street, still getting normal speeds. And this thing goes all the way up to 320 feet. So very, very good. And the ping and jitter were still fairly low considering how far I was at the maximum distance. To set this thing up and configure it, use the Deco app, which is available both on the Play Store and the App Store. And it's one of my favorite apps because it's very simple to use and it's very well organized. Now, on the main page, it gives you all the important information, whether pretty much which devices are connected to which network. If you have a home and guest network, which I do, you can check out your mesh systems. You can automate stuff if you have TP-Link smart home, the smart home switches, I should say, which I'm personally not interested, but you can do that. You can get basic parental controls for free. You get QoS, you could get reports, you can do a network scan. So a lot of this stuff, well, pretty much everything I mentioned is included. If you want more advanced parental controls, you do have to sign up for their Home Shield Pro, which does require a subscription. Now, in the router settings page, which again, going back to whatever TP-Link comes with, so this is not part of the subscription or anything else, you get your Wi-Fi settings. So you could, you know, enable your 2.4, enable your 5 gigahertz. You can set up a guest network. You can dedicate the 6 gigahertz as a dedicated backhaul channel or disable that. You get this advanced section, which gives you, again, more advanced stuff. The one thing that I noticed is when you're setting this thing up and if some of your old devices don't connect to it i would recommend disabling fast roaming and beam forming if you have these enabled and your stuff isn't connecting this is most likely the culprit but if you want to have them enabled then you pretty much have to forget the network on that device and retry connecting and see if that works if that doesn't work you pretty much have to disable those features so if you're looking for a budget system that's going to give you a lot of performance for the money uh, for up to 2.5 gigabit in internet speeds, then this is definitely, definitely worth taking a look at. But if you're capped at, let's just say gigabit speeds, I would probably look at the regular XC75 or the XC5300. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.